Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Al Gatler live here coming to you from Northwestern Vermont, where the clouds are uh, covering us again. We had some snow last night. I don't know why I like to give you the weather forecast, but, you know, it's what we talk about up here is the weather, right? I mean, you know, talk about weather. My guests are going to be joining us in a few minutes. They get their, their spell of all kinds of weather, so we'll talk about that in a minute. But I hope your week is going well. I'm really excited about the guest today, longtime friend, uh, there's actually two guests today. Uh, the other one is a longtime friend too, but um, I think when he first met me, he was probably a uh, teenager. I was like, who's that guy? But you know, we'll, uh, we'll have him on here in a second. Hey, I mentioned this book. I don't know why I keep pushing it, but the more I read it, the more I like it. Business Made Simple, Donald Miller. Uh, I'm just, this is my book of the week to recommend. It is broken up into little sections. When you get the book, you're given a, a email address to sign up for daily videos and, uh, you know, Donald Miller just does a great job with his content. If you are running a business, if you want to run a business, if you work in a business, want to be a better, higher value employee, this is the book for you. It's on Amazon. Sign up right now for it too, because he's got some special offers going on and a webinar coming up. So again, I don't get paid for that. I just like the content. So um, I figured I would go ahead and tell you about it. So, you know, this guy who's going to be our guest today uh, and, his, and his son, uh, I have to tell you, I've known him for a long time. He is just a great creative individual. Uh, I'm proud to call him my friend. I've enjoyed visiting him uh, at the world headquarters of x Expression and, and Expressions in, in Ventura, California. Uh, I'm going to have them join me right now. Joining me are Steve and Ryan Axtell. Hey, guys. Hey, hey Al. what's up, man? Axtell Depression. I like that. Did I say depression? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. That's kind of weak I'm having, right? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on with you guys? You know, we got a little nervous at the beginning. We got a little bit of latency issues as we're talking. So, mm. folks, forgive us. Um, you guys have been through a heck and high water, though. Uh, yeah. You had your power shut off, what, last week? and That's right. Uh, Several all- days last week. Uh, what happens here in Southern California is we typically are in a, a drought area mm-hmm. and uh, the winds start blowing, uh, Santa Ana winds coming in from uh, Mexico, and those get really, really big and uh, and that's a danger for spread of wildfires. And so what happened because there was some electrical fire started by the electric company's Sparks uh, a few years ago. the uh, the Thomas, Thomas Fire, Fire yeah, 2017. Um, a big one that burned many of our homes around our neighborhood here even, um, completely devastated this area. Uh, yeah. So what they do is preventative and they shut down the power when the high winds are there. So all last week we were <laughs> up and down with yeah. power outages and this week we just have low bandwidth. So that's the only other issue. Well, we have, we're supposed to get two years worth of rain in the next three days oh so, good Great. yeah well who knows if that's true you know california so, oscillates between you know drought complete and then, drought, and then rain that washes yeah. everything uh, away well, so. mudslides <laughs> other than that you know no you uh yeah you guys live in a beautiful beautiful spot and i, I visited oh, yeah. you out there and uh yeah absolutely absolutely so listen ryan no offense to you for the first couple of minutes but i'm gonna go <laughs> no back problem, man. i'm in some history here Pre Ryan, if you will, oh, let's do it about Steve and and what he's all about. You know, in startup <laughs> language, we call you a bootstrapper, Steve. You know, you uh, you started from very humble beginnings, uh, and uh, I love mentors. So let me go ahead and throw something up on the screen here. But this is young Steve Axtell, <laughs> age fourteen years old, and then underneath that is a lineup of our, our folks who would be mentors of yours so tell us a bit about this photo and about the the gentlemen who are with you sure uh, in the photos below so on the left side uh, well this photo is when i was first inspired by sesame street and i made those puppets of uh copies of the jim henson muppets uh when i was 14 and that's kermit and then i uh skipped the one next to me that's ernie in the middle Oscar the Grouch in the trash can, obviously. And then I made a couple of originals. Betty uh, is the one right next to me, and that's Oscar's girlfriend, I said. And then a little one by the trash can is Rusty. Um, And these guys were um, part of my inspiration, having just seen Sesame Street for the very first time on my aunt's television. Um, For some reason, she turned on PBS, and there it was. And uh, my inspiration took off completely and in fact quick story on that um, we sent um, we took photographs uh, for a local newspaper 
And that that publicity <laughs> uh, shot, uh, my mom cut it out of the newspaper and sent it into Jim Henson saying, uh, oh my gosh, maybe this would be a way for Steve to have some employment when he grows up. Because <laughs> <laughs> she had no idea what I would be doing because I was yeah. such a, a creative kid uh, and really a C, C and D student. Uh, so yeah. they were worried yeah. about me. And uh, so <laughs> well, they... Uh, she sent that to Jim Henson, and um, I got a letter back from Henson saying, uh, please don't use the name Muppets, and uh, you know you shouldn't make copies of my characters, but you're very right. talented, and why don't you make your own designs? Yeah. And uh, join the Puppeteers of America, meet other puppeteers and stuff. And so that sent me on a journey to finding my own look. So that's, first of all, that's that picture. Yeah. Yeah, and, that's uh, great. That's fantastic. That, cir that story comes circles back after a while. We'll talk about that. But... Yeah. Um, one of our one of so, our viewers on uh, on Facebook, by the way, uh, I'm sorry, on LinkedIn, saying, um, a "New fan here, Steve. Fantastic sculpting work, sir." So we're going to get to that in a minute. Just as a you, preview, yeah. folks, we showed that in the beginning uh, in the slide uh, promoting the show, and we're mm -hmm. going to show some video here in just a few minutes. So back to the story, Steve. Yep. I want to go back to the to the uh, to the slide uh, that I had up there for a second. You've got yeah. these three key people below you here. And yes. I love talking about mentor, yeah. mentors, being a mentor and having mentors. Who are these gentlemen? Charles Casto, my art teacher from high school, uh, my junior and senior years um, in the bottom left right there. And Charles just uh, died not too long ago. And I was able to keep up with him uh, throughout his older life yeah. uh, in Willard, Ohio. And Charles was... Uh, uh, really inspirational to me. He understood my ADD and um, had it himself, and would always throw me art projects and sculpture Try to keep and stuff. Busy, keep me busy. Engaged, yeah. He he asked me to uh, draw like centerfold caricatures of the teachers for the uh, yearbook, ah. and so I did a lot of that uh, work. And he asked him. Uh, um, he he asked me um, what I was. Uh, going into uh, as far as uh, my my puppet um, stuff and I took uh, some of the puppets that I had made to him and I showed him what I was doing and I said uh, I, I'm on a quest to find my own designs mm. and uh, I want to work in latex and here's a couple of heads that I made in latex and so Chuck helped me dive deep dive into making uh, latex puppets yeah yeah that's super fantastic. fun so and he was, was really in inspirational. Who, who, who is that? In the middle is Mr. Roberts, um, Nelson Roberts. He was my uh, music teacher in high school, and he allowed me to produce an entire show. That's right. A musical show with puppets and uh, bringing in the music, and I wrote the show. Um, we had the choir there, and, and we had a, so cool. a UFO land, and the whole choir in harmony and in dis dissonant harmony would go to make wow. the uh, spaceship land, land. Yeah. and yeah, then it opened yeah. up fog machines and the alien came out and according to my calculations we've approximated the reappellation of inertia of a congruent <laughs> undercycle reappraised and fantastically rectified competing stifling results was one of the lines from that I'll never Ryan, forget. How long is it I can the old man carrying that line around? Well, I was going to say I can attest to the fact that that's one of the lines. Yes, because <laughs> that's his go-to. Hey, does anyone have an alien voice in here? <laughs> nailed it. He nails it every time. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, that's so he he was he's completely uh, uh, supported me my entire uh, life, that's even great. way after high school. Yeah, fantastic. And mentors are so important. I think finally here is, is your youth pastor, correct? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. uh, Russ yeah. Robinson. And yeah. Russ is not only my youth pastor, but he was also an engineer, a mechanical yeah. engineer. That's lot, right. Electronic yes. And yeah. he came out um, and we worked together on several uh, toy inventions. He mm -hmm. came out from Ohio, hung with me in my shop and, and worked with uh, a toy company making several uh, bubble related products yeah. with a toy of Ohio and uh, also uh, he worked with me on the uh, improvements that we made to the magic drawing board that went from the original magic drawing board that we released in 84 to the version two, version two the, pro, oh, cool. the pro magic drawing no, board no, which gave it a lot more reliable. 
Let me stop you there, guys. Remember, yeah. we're on LinkedIn, so yeah. not everybody knows what a magic board is. Oh, magic drawing. Ryan, can you can you sneak off there and grab a magic board? Is that possible? Um, I think <clears> so. Let's see. Yeah, well, Steve and I'll keep talking. And uh, oh, you got one right there. Okay, good. So for those of you that are joining us, you know, Xtile Expressions, um, they they supply entertainers with uh, all kinds of of things that people use to perform. So uh, puppets are certainly the the steadfast thing that they that they do um, provide us with, but they really have a whole bunch of other programs, things that they do. We're going to get into artificial intelligence in a few minutes, all that stuff. So Steve's going to show you right now what a magic board looks like. Well, this is this is one of those things that I <laughs> would show you if uh, let me let me get my see is that other marker working. working? Hang on, we got a marker issue yeah, here. Yeah. That's all right. I have all we'll kinds of things today. So this is live, <laughs> folks. This is live this is... and it's free. So I just want to remind you. That's right. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just to just to recap, as a company, you know, our value is to create innovations that help entertainers entertain. And so Steve obviously is a sculptor and designer and started out in puppets, but the magic drawing board was kind of one of his first steps into kind of the world of magic and entertainment. And so right, um, right, right. this was one of his first patents, I believe. Uh, second, Maybe not the first on yeah. the bird arm illusion. Bird arm illusion was the first, but obviously you have a, a character here and you've got a, a wonderful opportunity to make a character come to life. Are, you just drew those eyes and the eyes are moving. <laughs> what, what, what in God's name? Oh my gosh. I yeah, know. Al, um, are you alive? It? Right. Right on. <laughs> 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 Come on, it's sassy. So yeah, the, the idea that's is, the yeah, board. you. And that's the second one. The first one was, the, you mentioned a bird arm illusion. In fact, the yeah. bird I used in the illusion is very much like the one uh, over your left shoulder there by the platypus uh, that, that I, one of the first product of yours I ever used. So yeah, oh, that, then, used that bird, yeah. bird arm illusion, which again, for um, for folks yeah. who, are, who, who are, you know, watching that don't know, essentially I'm going to put this jacket on, but I would have a, a, a sleeve that would have a, a puppet on it, and uh, it was an amazing illusion that mm -hmm. looked like I uh, I was you know holding a bird and the bird was uh, was talking. So pretty incredible stuff, just amazing uh, stuff. Tens of thousands of those have been sold, and the Magic Drawing Board probably over over sixty thousand now around the world too. They're not just yeah talking yeah. About the yeah around the world. Yeah, we sell to about eighty countries right yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, I see your uh, Axtel uh, Entertainers uh, Facebook page. And the places that people write in from, it's just, it's mind boggling. It's amazing. So um, yeah. just to show too, Steve, that you want full circle, you mentioned a letter to Jim Henson. You mentioned Sesame Street. I love this. Here oh. is a, a, a shot of you with a fully autographed uh, poster <laughs> from Sesame Street. Yeah. I assume this thing, in fact, I know what they are because I've seen this in person. These are all the Muppeteers uh, that were working the yes. Muppet show. Give me the background of that. Well, um, as you know, I stopped making copies of Jim Henson and I started my own look. Yeah. I, I discovered uh, latex uh, as a medium and that set me off when I, it was when I went to Disney World yeah. and I had gone into the magic shop there, the same one that uh, Steve Martin was actually working at. And that, um, I saw the masks, the Don Post Studio masks, okay. and that inspired me up behind the uh, desk there. Oh, Dale Brown. Oh, yeah. How, how cool. Uh, Dale, man. I'm going to have Dale on, on the show, on our show pretty soon. I'm going to talk Dale. about He's that. a good man. He's a good man. Um, but I had that, and, and uh, so I just completely stopped and pivoted away from Henson and started my own look and design from his words and inspiration. Wow. So a few years ago, I get a call from the producer of Sesame Street, one of the producers, Lewis Mitchell, and... Um, and Lewis said, Steve, uh, we want to let you know how much you inspire us. We watch your videos here almost every day, and we're running your platypus video right now, <laughs> which is ah. so crazy. And we we just want you to know how much you inspire us. And so uh, it came full circle. Sesame Street inspired me. I'm inspiring Sesame Street, and they sent me this poster uh, as gratitude. So cool. For that. Yeah, that's incredible. So Ryan, you've been along for the ride here um, quite yeah. a bit. Um, I believe if I have it right, you're the same age as my daughter. You're 36 years old. Um, yep. Steve, how long has Axtel been around? Xbox, Axtel since 80, 82. Yeah. So you uh, really uh, were just uh, missed the beginning of it by two years there. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> so you've been around for a while, and um, 
you've watched, uh, you know, you've watched Steve as a businessman, as a creative, mm -hmm. as a salesman. I I'm telling you, Steve, you're one of the best salesmen I know in my life. So, which is why I wanted you to be on the LinkedIn part of this because you really are really a wonderful marketer, a wonderful salesperson. Mm -hmm. um, I love watching videos, which we're going to show here in a minute of people visiting your shop because you just know how to how to do that. And I was I was um, blessed to come and tour your shop with you live oh. on Facebook in the early days of Facebook Live. So yeah. Ryan, back to you for a second. Um, you've watched your dad do all this, and we just talked yeah. about mentors. D tell tell me where where that kind of lies with you in watching this. Uh, I'm going to call a pretty tremendous guy. Uh, oh and, yeah, and mom putting this all together. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. You know, I think what's so I'm the oldest of four kids, and what I what I really took away growing up was that you can. You can. I learned, and, and my my brother and two sisters learned this as well. That you can really do anything you want if you put your mind to it. You know, every every job has its pros and cons. But watching my family, you know, build a small business out of a niche that maybe on the surface seems like, well, how how does that work? You know, mm -hmm. um, but then you realize, man, if you have a passion for something and you can have authentic connections with people and offer a solution to yeah. a situation that they're looking for solutions in, then you can sustain a living on that. And so, you know, my career, I, I went to school for management and marketing and music theory, and I've been an independent musician for a long time and, and still am. And so my kind of entrepreneurial journey took me into music production, and then I've been a music pastor for a long time as well. And then about a year and a half ago, it, it just made sense and the timing is right to kind of join forces with, with yeah. Axtel. So I've been adjacent to the business my whole life, but I actually joined forces with Steve um, about a year and a half ago and, and uh, joined the team. And so I, I kind of help um, from an operations side and, and kind of a management and marketing side. And so my position now is how do I help take the creativity and the dreams of Steve and, and how do we maybe uh, flush it out and how do I put, put legs to it? Yeah. And yeah. Um, one of the great synergies that we have is as I mentioned, I'm ADD, and so I'm all over the place. And, and I'm I, OCD, and he's OCD, <laughs> and so he focuses in on the yeah. crudest details. Drives me nuts. I know. So sometimes I'll have to come to Steve, and I'll have to say, "Hey, man, I, I need your I need your voice of clarity," because I feel like I'm probably obsessing about something too much, and it's time time to let it go. But um, yeah, but, but kind of back to your original question, you know, Steve's been a huge mentor for me. Um, I call him Steve. Yeah, around okay. the office and around our, our staff. Uh, okay. So sometimes it slips out when it's just the two of us. Steve slash dad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's he's taught me a lot about creativity. He's taught me a lot about you know how to uh, monetize it, not not in a um, a gross sense or yeah. an authentic sense. But you know, how do you take something you're passionate about and, and turn it into a, a business? Because the truth is, everyone's passionate about something, but there's a small amount of people who can convert that into. Um, a business that offers value to other people, and that's right. That's one of the biggest differences, maybe between a hobby and a business. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. And yeah, so no I feel like I've learned a, I've learned a ton just from watching him do that and struggle. There's some really hard years, and it's not easy. But to see it sustain over that, and then you realize, you know, every business is essentially the same. You know, and, and you're familiar with Story Brand, and I've been a huge Donald Miller fan yeah. since his early writings. But but the idea that um, Kind of regardless of your product, we're all we're all trying yeah. to you know the, the hero's journey and, and step in and help um, make our, our customer the star of something. And so for us, it's been like, well, how do we how do we really boil that down to people that like to create and innovate and yeah. you know inspire people to be better entertainers? What does that mean for us? So how That's do right. we how do we focus in on that journey now that we've been in business thirty eight years? You know, what does it look like? Um, moving forward. So we're always asking ourselves those questions, you know, how do we offer value to our, our customers, yeah. not just here's the product we make, how do yeah. we sell it? No, yeah. no those, are, those yeah. are different yeah. questions to ask. So. Well, and I, and I want to get to how you guys do that, but you said something just now, because I mentioned bootstrapping and, yeah. and, and Ryan, Ryan uh, mentioned it and went there, Steve, and so I want to I focus back to you for a second. There were rough years. There were had to yeah. be years where you know, and, and we haven't even for our general audience here watching in places, you know, like YouTube or, or or, or LinkedIn um, that, you know, they don't still don't know the full breadth of what you guys do. Um, and, I, and, and I'll throw your website up here in a second. But, you know, um, what was what were those lean years? A bootstrapper, as we know, is someone who, you know, you weren't capitalized by by, you know, uh, 
money from up in the valley. Um, you were not. Right. Uh, you didn't have some angel investor, you know, dumping money into your your organization. You had to do this on your own. So when Ryan mentions the lean years, what were they like, and, and how did mm -hmm. you get through it? Yeah. Well, um, the first lean years, of course, were when I started the business, and that was, um, you know, being self-employed and working a full-time job as well. I was in psychology, working in the state hospital system in California, um, working, uh, being like that. You know, when you're self-employed, you get to choose which day you work, and you only have to work half days. It just depends on which 12 hours you want it to be. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of sweat. And, equity, and actually, sure. 12 hours is ridiculous, because we I was working 16 hours a day, no question about it. So, um, yeah, that was uh, the hardest part, I think, was when uh, we were having, I had to make a decision if I was going to go into full-time entertainment right. or manufacture um, puppets and illusions and tricks. Uh, and I made a decision when Ryan was born, actually, that if I was going to be a full-time entertainer, I'd be on a cruise ship or I'd be in Vegas. Mm -hmm. or Going I'd a lot, traveling a lot. Away. And if that was the case, it wasn't going to be really uh, kind of the family unit that we wanted to have. So Susie helped me decide that we would start our own business making uh, these products. And so uh, pushing real hard on two full-time jobs, one of them being a career and one of them being a job that I was uh, adjusting. And I went half-time the, in the psychology field, full-time in the business, and transitioned. And luckily, I had a few breaks uh, with my inventions at the beginning, the bird arm illusion and yeah. the magic drawing board that really kind of launched us and put the kids through college and yeah. bought our house and everything else. So uh, that was the first of the lean years. And of course, we went through another big lean year uh, during uh, 2008 when the financial crisis happened. Yeah. And um, I had to tell my crew that we're going to have to lay off a whole bunch of people. And this is, of course, we're now in a pandemic, so that's another issue. Yeah. But back in 2008, uh, that's where the story of the platypus comes from. Um, I gathered my team and I said, I'm going to have to lay off people and I don't want to do that. So let's all brainstorm, look around for resources that we don't have to buy to make something new. And let's find all the fabrics, all the mm -hmm. parts, any, any kind of components that we have that were that are just being stored here there's yeah. tons of it because our shop is big and sprawling and had all kinds of boxes of things we didn't even know what was in them so we opened those and we looked around and and one of my um employees jose brought me this big roll of gray fur real short gray fur and he said hey we got this what do you think and i said that's great and i looked up behind him on the shelf and there was a head of a duck chuck the duck that we made and chuck the duck has a duck bill and this gray fur i put it together could not i don't i already have a duck so i don't want yeah, yeah the gray duck but a platypus so i grabbed the duck head put it with this fur and we made this little guy up here um and this is our platypus and we put together um um a puppet Song. and i realized i don't know how many ventriloquists would or puppeteers would want a platypus. So I ended up making this song, uh, wrote it in the shower, actually, and recorded it that afternoon. I know him. <laughs> hey, that's you. <laughs> the platypus, yeah. Can you hear? <laughs> Yeah, I think we might have lost Al. I'm back here. You know, I got to tell you. Hey. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, I, I gave you guys the full screen so we could, okay. uh, we could oh, have good. you guys go ahead and, and enjoy that video. Oh, that and was that fun. was amazing. I mean, that, that, that grew legs. There's a 10-hour version of it. 
Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> it's just. This is, uh, oh, yeah, it went crazy. It, it went viral and really put us on the map with this. And we sold a whole bunch of these puppets. And this is the very first one. It's not even finished. Yet it's, <laughs> it's just the one we rushed to get on video. And uh, so he's been uh, just like that. We didn't want to finish him out. He's been part of our, yeah, our, our history and our family. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, my platypus, I'm looking for him. He's I got the, <laughs> Louis over there. The uh, hey, Here's something that I, I want to show everybody. Um, this is a product that uh, that I, I, I feel so connected to Ryan now. Um, <laughs> this is the magic mic. And he makes them. First of all, it's for bad ventriloquist, number one. So you can do ventriloquism that way. Oh, or yeah. You can do it like that and show people that that's a talking mic. There you go. See, put that on somebody standing up, a volunteer, yeah. and make them talk. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yes. But Ryan, there's there's some history here. Tell us. Yeah. What the history is, I, you know, there we go. I got that on the camera. What is the history with you and the microphone? Yeah. So throughout uh, different seasons of my life, I would contract and make certain products. So when I was in school in Seattle, I would make bird arm illusions. So I'd. I'd uh, you know build a batch, ship them off, and then when I was back in California, this was you know 15 years or so later, we'd have different contractors you know who would build different things, and so for a season I was building um, all of the mic mouths. So I had like a, a setup in our uh, in our garage, you know, and would would build these together. Uh, so yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, screw tightening. And there's actually a lot that goes into something as, oh, yeah. as simple as that. But I think you know again one of the key things whether people watching our into ventriloquism or not or, yeah. or entertainment or not is a lot of Steve's ideas, you know, the, the, the gimmick, if you will, is actually fairly simple, right? You hold up a microphone and you make it talk, but, but yeah. the, there's the, the illusion pays off way bigger than the gimmick. Like even yeah. if you know what's happening, there's still a win there. Yeah. And I think that's the same with the bird arm illusion and the magic drawing board. You know, it's, it's not so much that oh, I don't know how it's happening. It's just, you buy into it and it's a lot of fun. Right, and right. so we've, we've sold a ton of these. Um, we've seen them on talent shows yeah. and, and yeah. comedians use it. And, you know, it's a, the classic gag to, you know, make someone say something that they don't want, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I built, I built quite a few of those in my garage. No, and I, and listen, sure. I have used this quite a few on uh, times on stage. Uh, and, uh, and also because of the size I've been able to, it's portable. I've been able to use yeah. it off stage as well and yeah. have a lot of fun with it. It's just, it's one of the greatest Axtel products out there. <laughs> it's so fun, man. Portability. That and, and the magic drawing board, which I've used in more business addresses, you know, throwing mm. business. Uh, and, and I didn't say this to the audience at the beginning. I am a professed ventriloquist. Someone said only a true ventriloquist could understand <laughs> this stuff. Yeah. But no, that's not true because really what we're going to get to about in a moment is what I've advertised to our business audience. And that is, you know, Hey, um, there's a real story here about promotion. So I want to yeah. hit with a couple of things. I think one of my bill collectors is after me. Uh, <laughs> got this one, but hopefully it's something friendly because I think the same person <laughs> sent me a friend request. Hey, folks, if you're on Facebook, especially, you have to give StreamYard permission to mm. show your profile. Yeah. So yeah. look for that in the feed for, for what we're talking about. It's right at the top. Just say, yes, StreamYard has permission to use my profile and we could put your name and, and your profile image up there. Very cool. For instance, like Dale Brown. So, you know, there's a great example. Dale is giving yeah. permission and, uh, and there's that. So, guys, I want to get to this promotion piece, okay? You guys are relentless promoters, relentless. And when you do something new, you make sure you tell folks. So um, yeah. step back with me for a second. We're going to bring a, a piece of video up that mm. Steve uh, shared with his followers uh, very timely week of the uh, uh, the, the week before uh, the inauguration was going to occur. Check this out. It's a pretty amazing piece of video. All right. Here's an update on Biden. Uh, as you can see, the eyes are detailed. The mouth has been detailed and it's in place. Um, I'm now doing this. I've also got the hair um, stroked and done. It's not smooth yet, but it's uh, sculpted. And I'm now doing a skin texture. So what we do with the skin texture is take an orange and notice, notice how the texture of an orange is very similar to my hand. Oranges are used quite often in sculpture. And so what we do to make a texture stamp, like I have already stamped on his cheek right here, um, what we do is we paint liquid latex onto an orange. 
When it's dry, you peel it off and it becomes a negative of this. So it will look just like this on the skin. And this has little uh, dimples sticking out of it. Uh, all the texture is sticking out of it. And so you invert it so it actually fits your fingers nicely. And you roll it like this onto the skin. And that makes, so this doesn't have it yet. Let me go ahead and press that on there. You see that coming? Look at that. Isn't that cool? This is a skin texture coming from an orange. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's good. We do that. We're careful. Now, is this navel or Valencia? <laughs> key. This one was a key to the success. <laughs> it's key. Usually, you do Republicans. Sorry, not and, key line. Oh, oh no. So I'll stop it there, guys. I mean, you know, I just an incredible piece of video. Uh, you know, um, people are obviously commenting just how creative it is and how, mm. how awesome. What I love about that, though, is you guys are becoming a team. You know, yeah. because you're asking what type of orange it is, you know, Ryan. <laughs> I mean, you know, why is guy dumb questions yeah. that are just yeah. perfectly pitched? My point is the two of you are a, are a, are your promotional team. Steve, you've been a one man promotion team for a long, long time, and now and now Brian has kind of joined oh, the, the marketing yeah. department, if you will. Yeah, you guys broadcast once a week, yep. uh, at the very least. Okay, you inside a, Axtel. You do giveaways. You you reach out to your audience. You you make sure that your customers feel as if they are on the inside of everything that goes on. You know, um, you know uh, I'll, I'll, um, I'll, it's play about here. them. Huh? What's that? It's about them. Well, yeah. it is. And that's, that's, the, that's the business lesson that I'm really talking mm -hmm. about here. Yeah. Relentless promotions. You never, mm -hmm. ever stop. And Steve, you have been that way since I have known you. Uh, and tell me how you discovered that, what, what brought that about. And then Ryan, as you've watched Steve do this, you know, what have you gleaned from it? Because you're obviously, you know, uh, the master's student uh, on mm. this one. Yeah. Well, I mean, some of it came natural as a kid. I had a, the neighborhood bicycle decorating um, shop and I'd weave the oh, yeah. crepe paper through the tires and stuff and then the charge them a quarter and the parents would make me give back the quarter <laughs> <laughs> kind of stuff. <laughs> and uh, and I had a lemonade stand, all, always doing that kind of stuff. And, and uh, but then um, as I began to start this business, I realized, man, I got a lot to learn. And I started devouring um, audio programs. And I've got closet full of everything Nightingale Conant ever put out, as mm -hmm. you do, Al, I'm sure. All yeah. the cassettes, then Absolutely. it went to CDs, and now yeah. it's downloads and audible and audio, audio uh, books. And, uh, but all of that stuff, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, a, a, being ADD, I'm not a reader. I can't process a book, even though I bought, every time I go on a business trip, I buy another book in the uh, airport um, gift, uh, gift store, and then I'm, I'm reading that, and I read the first chapter, and that's it. And I've got a whole library of books that I've only read the first chapters of, mm. but I'll listen to audio books and read, you know, 30 sometimes a year yeah. uh, by listening. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's really kind of where any kind of training came from. That was my college. Ryan went to actual business school and he brings a lot to the table now, man. I mean, it's so we're we're completely revamping our website. Yeah. And Ryan's building it now as a reactive website. Mm hmm Responsive well, website. Yeah. But I gotta tell you, some of us that have known you a long time are gonna miss the old website. No, you know, no knock, but <laughs> Yeah, you know, it feels like it's been a part of my life for so long. Totally. And well, now that I've already been on your show with a call in, and uh, I'm completely terrorized <laughs> about my site being non-responsive. So, <laughs> from your yeah. last show. Yeah, so. I, every, every day I do a new show. Every day I, I scare Steve into something else. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. But I think you know. I think to Steve's credit, even on our old website, like the SEO statistics are great. The yeah. speed's great. Oh, like no. it's ranked highly. You know. So like to his credit, he's. He's done a lot of stuff on his own, and you know I think for anyone here that's involved in small business or startups, you wear a lot of hats. And so I know the tension for us is 
you know, if you focus on marketing, you know, what what gives to allow space for that? Or yeah. if, you're, if you're building a new website or if you're planning strategy, you know, there's you're always balancing the tension of working in the business and working on the business. And man, I mean, right uh, there, Ryan, uh, we could do an hour on in the yeah, business man. and yeah. on the business. And I yeah. and I struggle with that because there's so many day to day things that have to happen, especially if that involves oh. shipping orders, oh, yeah. you know, and so you can know like, OK, well, there's there's dollar bills attached to these tasks that will then pay our bills and pay our staff and everything. But at the same time, if we don't work on the business, those future sales may not be there. And so I know that's something that we're always working yeah. and, and we're always trying to navigate. And that came, get, came from Stephen Covey, the four quadrants and the proactive um, and not urgent or the, the uh, Tyranny important of the urgent, yeah. and not urgent are the ones that really we need to focus on to be proactive to, to grow the business. But we yeah. always end up working in the urgent and, and important quadrant, yeah. which destroys... Yeah. Anytime you guys get on one of your one of your um, live streams, which you do, like I said, every week. Yeah, every Thursday. You're working yeah. on the business at that point because That's you're reaching it. out yeah. to customers. You're giving stuff away. <laughs> you had auctions, uh, you know, throughout the early early part of the, maybe you're still doing the auctions. Yeah, uh, we you know, are. We do. Yeah. Well, yeah, what's kind of you know? so what's kind of interesting about that, Al, is I, I think Steve's always been a great promoter, and I think that comes from one, he genuinely loves his business and products he puts out. And you can you can smell when someone's being dishonest or being a you know used car salesman. Yeah, not to knock used car salesman, but we've all been in situations where it's like, man, you're peddling this for a paycheck. Like you don't really believe in this. And I think what has worked for Steve has been one his performance background and being an entertainer himself, and then also believing in the things that he makes and seeing that it brings joy to people because that's really what yeah. we're into is we, yeah. we want to yeah. make the world a happier place. So because he believes in that, I think that's allowed him to communicate well and then I feel like when I when I joined we, we just begin to really look at you know hey how how can we in our limited capacity maybe step up from a social media presence to an online presence how do we continue to engage with and you know to tell the story of Axel Expressions because yeah. to, to yeah. your point we're and I'm always make this this joke that we're a niche's niche you know we <laughs> niche is niche. we're a niche within a niche um, in terms of the products that we make, but the idea of making the world a happier place—I mean, that's that's yeah. very universal. And so, if yeah. we can continue to tell that story and then showcase the the people in our community that are doing it, you know, that's that's a real message, and it highlights our community. And it's not just talking about us all the time. And yeah. so, Inside Axtel really came out of this. We started doing auctions. It's funny. This was like a year and a half ago. Steve said, "Like, hey, I've got all this stuff." Um, survival. Is there any way we could we could try auctioning? So we're on Facebook Live. We were trying to do auctions, and you know, Facebook at the time wouldn't let you see every single comment that came through. Yeah. And so we're trying to find the highest bidder. And people in Austria are saying, "My I, bid I came bid, in first. But, and yeah, you can't yeah. see your bid. What's yeah. the exchange rate?" Like, ah, so we had a yeah, lot of learning yeah, curve yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. But what we discovered was, man, this this kind of weekly rhythm of going live mm -hmm. and you know, share share what's going Energy. on during the week at our shop. And yeah. then also highlight an entertainer, highlight someone like you who maybe has some advice Absolutely. to other business yeah. owners, um, share pictures like Sherry right there. Sherry <laughs> uh, is an insider. And so it's become kind of this, this weekly forum that we look forward to. Honestly, it's a highlight of our week getting to do it. And it's, it's marketing and communication, but in a very <laughs> informal and um, um, fun way way of connecting with people you know what i mean yeah. so it, it feels like you're kind yeah. of gathering your your inside crowd and, and the, the cool thing is we're able to make that available to everybody so we have a lot of people that yeah. like to watch who, who don't buy from us and that's yeah. that's great it's yeah. just a chance to kind of have them in the sandbox well, they're not they're the non-customers that, well, that are you know, our you next have, group yeah but you have a lot of customers that buy from you that that's aren't right. ventriloquists that aren't puppet, right. uh, yeah, performing puppeteers, Educators, people teachers. that are just having some fun. And then, of course, we have policemen, firemen, teachers, Fire, yep. pastors, rabbis, you know, all, all yeah. types Stage of Stage comedians. People. Exactly. Yeah. Who are buying your yeah. products because, you know, and someone wrote here, I found that interesting. Yeah, but you need creative people. And they're exactly right. That's why you work as hard as you do. You need no. someone to buy this stuff, you know. Um, and someone says, and you get to connect with Cool, unique people. Which oh, you're oh, not kidding. And yeah. any, think, any chance we're talking get... about me, Ryan? I'm just saying. Absolutely, so, we are. Back to you, Ryan. Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> one other, you know, one other thing I was I was thinking about is 
um, you know, as, as a business, especially a niche, you're always wrestling with, you know, two factors, selling to an existing market who may already have your products, and then the acquisition of new customers, you know, grow, growing your customer base. And, you know, people that have been, been around business school, you know, you, you know, it's much, much cheaper to sell to existing customers. But at the same time, you, you reach a point of maybe market yep. saturation. And I think yeah, this has exactly. been something within our business where one of the reasons we offer so many products, mm -hmm. you know, like even when you guys were looking at our website, you know, we have so many pages because so many of our customers have 10 to 15 of our products. And yes. so on one side, it's how do we continue to innovate to provide solutions for people who are already part of the Axtell community, yeah. who are maybe looking for something new for a virtual show. A lot of people are doing virtual shows right now and they're looking yeah. for a new character. At the same time, we're always really thinking through, hey, what, you know. Who are the non-users? Yeah, what's another market out there? And that's kind of where the Dinkies Parents, came, came along too. children, yeah. the toy yeah. market. What's I, an adjacent market that you don't have to be a stage entertainer, but you, you might still love um, the idea of, of bringing something to life. And so, um, the dinkies are these kind of new, you know, toy slash slash puppets that we've been making. We have five available, and we have ten in the works right now. And each, yeah, wow. Each one has a theme song, and what's cool is you, you stick your hand in the back yeah. of the head. It's small, so like a virtual show. You mentioned you can travel with it easily, like a mic mouth. Um, so how small it is. Yeah, but it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. And so the idea behind this is, you know, it's it's something that that appeals more to even even a kid looking to play with it. Um, all the way to someone that maybe does yeah. doesn't consider themselves an entertainer. Yeah. But it's like, man, I'd love to have a little sidekick jump on a call and just not even yeah. talk, just just look around and add some visual creativity, you know, to my my stream, <laughs> my stream or, or whatnot. And so, yeah. um, those are the two things we're always looking. How do we continue yeah. to serve our existing community, and then also how do we continue to innovate to maybe step into some new markets? And right. Steve, Steve's always yeah. been good at well, that. This yeah, was you know, uh, this was because of the pandemic, and as Sherry yeah. says, they're they're very affordable. There you go. And we, as an opportunity came along, uh, where we had Ooh, to point. yeah to uh, we have to sell our products in a market that's very difficult to sell three to five hundred dollar puppets, let alone uh, ten thousand to twenty five thousand to fifty thousand dollar animatronics that we sell. Um, a lot of people are struggling financially, and obviously we're all in this together. Uh, we came out with the Dinkies, which was a dream I had uh, 25 years ago. I literally had a dream where I walked into a toy store and I saw a whole um, stack of these um, these guys on a pole in the in the toy store like this. And some of the characters, yeah. Yeah, these are some of the and I and I stared at them and they were so incredibly detailed in their character and colors uh, that. I just remember, and I looked at the top, and up here was Axtell, it said. And that was a dream I literally had 25 years ago, and I wrote it down in my notebook, and I'm just now, because of the pandemic, yeah. able, I'm just so now doing bring, bring, that. Bring, bring that back for a second, Steve. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm gonna ask sure. each of you, you know, yeah. everybody has a favorite of something. And <laughs> you, you guys, I remember um, when it was time to ship these, yeah. people were just, you know, getting them in the mail and showing them on, on yeah. this book and whatnot. So what what are each of your two favorite uh, characters there? Oh man, um, let me get the first one. Go right. on the floor. So I'm, yeah, I'm a, gosh, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, yeah. I mean, I love the, I love the monkey. You know, that was the one that kind of started it all. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, as the one that writes a lot of the music for these characters, I gotta say, I really like, I really like the lion and the, and the cheetah. Um, they're they're the same sculpt but kind of different different hair and bodies. Yeah. I liked how the music came together for them, and we figured out that if you kind of shake them, they kind of do this crazy dance. <laughs> and so that's just been kind of a just a fun little you know. We added that to the music. <laughs> oh, yeah. so I'll have to. I don't know if you have that video, but the um, I don't have that video, but I'm willing. Dinky to look Lion, for the Dinky Lion on. Um, on YouTube, yeah, Dinky Line, "Hear Me Roar" is, is the song, but the, right. the fun well, thing I'll is each. That. I'll look for yeah. that. You know, I, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, do the magic of, of television here while I look for that thing. You mentioned <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned animatronics, and um, yeah, yeah. You know, when I was visited you, Steve, I think it was almost two years ago. You were extremely excited about something that was new. And you showed it to me, and now I was excited about it. So, folks, sit back for a second and watch this. 
this is what happens when you dream for your business. You, you've got the stuff around you. You say, what's the next thing? And, uh, you know, you've got a little bit of energy, which these two guys have. This is what happens. <laughs> it's just you know when i was when i was grabbing that video i said well, i at least have to wait till the payout which is what? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was go ahead that was an incredible project that we did with david fee an entrepreneur in pigeon forge tennessee which is right near dollywood right there yeah. in the same town uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and and david uh is probably next to Dolly was the most famous entrepreneur oh, is, yeah. uh, but he sold his company and he sold this. This was for the Frizzle Chicken Farmhouse Cafe. And every 20 minutes when you're eating, uh, a new song plays and the chickens are um, singing all around the restaurant. All around. Yeah. There's, there's uh, they say uh, over a hundred chickens in the restaurant. It's actually 62, but um, <laughs> we built 62 of these animatronic chickens and they're there at the Frizzle Chicken farmhouse cafe in pigeon forge tennessee <laughs> and that's a product extension and so uh you know yeah. let, me, uh, let me also take a second to show this other product extension this is a great clip i think these folks are visiting your shop uh and you're showing them the next mm. level of animatronics as well <laughs> My name is Howard. What's your name? My name's Steven. You know I don't really care, right? <laughs> How old are you? Pretty old. You know, there's three ways to tell if you're getting old. One is a loss of memory. The second, I forget. <laughs> Always leaving my laugh. Um, that guy is sitting there independent uh, of, yep. of anything other than just, you know, that is the puppet. It's animatronics. Why, Steve Axtell? Why, at this stage of your life, are you getting into animatronics? Well, I, I worked on animatronics since 2008 with, mm -hmm. uh, with an engineer that saw my puppets and said, I want to work with the best puppet company in the world and he came from Dallas Texas and he he said I want to buy your puppets and put my animatronics into them he was a robotics expert mm -hmm. and Ron Palmer and I said well you know let me let me see your work and he, he brought his work in he had a, a tricycle with a, a little girl on it riding around my shop and and all my employees were laughing and looking at this thing and I said okay I've been wanting to build animatronics in our company and we have 80 countries worth of customers so why don't you come work for me and we'll release the animatronics through our company and that was the start of our animatronics department but this what you just showed that's a new development that we yeah. did uh, two years ago and developed it really hard last year and this is called Axtel Intelligence or AI and this is able to make the characters listen and respond to your uh, own talking you can talk to this guy for hours and he'll wow. tell jokes sing songs answer your questions whatever 
Yeah. Totally independent of any operator. And what's unique about about this system is, you know, instead of a, a voice like Siri or Alexa or something like yeah. that, um, you can actually record your own voice or we can do it for you, but they can be character true, you know, so, yeah. wow. um, it, you know, the toucan can be the toucan voice from all of our Axtrax tapes. Or if you have a specific character, you know, you can even yeah. license it. Like this could be built for Disney and you could have Mickey Mouse responding in Mickey Mouse voice, yep. you know, so that was, I think, one thing again that set Steve apart is he wasn't looking at it just technically. You know, how do I make, how do I make a conversation tree that can be autonomous from a controller? But he really, because then you don't want to talk to a robot. He really yeah. wanted to be. Yeah. I want you know a kid or someone to be able to come up and ask a question, and it's going to respond in a character's voice. Right. Um, he wanted right. to keep really the the spirit alive, and so sure. I think that led to the way he developed with some of his engineers the the AI actual yeah. intelligence system. Wow, that's and that's really important for anybody that has a brand um, to to not have it be like Siri or not have it be connected to Google for any any answer to any question because you can imagine you ask it anything and you're going to get some really bizarre answers. And so sometimes you want to keep it inside. So if you had, for example, Shrek and he was. Uh, powered by my AI, he's not going to know right. stock prices. He won't know. He doesn't know. He would yeah. say, "I don't know." You know, nah. he yeah. he wouldn't know. Yeah. So, um, but but he would have everything, all knowledge about the his things world. that you know yeah. his world is in, and that's really important to a licensor. Yeah, yeah. No, great stuff. I mean, absolutely great stuff. And again, this goes back to too. Every time you do something new, you promote it. So the promotion mm -hmm. is relentless, and it's mm -hmm. the message that I really wanted to deliver with you guys today. You don't ever stop. You don't ever stop. In Never. fact, you know, you mentioned your YouTube videos. It's yet again another way you guys grab attention. Let me go ahead and play what you were talking about. And Ryan, well, before I play this too, I had no idea that you were the guy behind the music. Oh, so yeah. now I've learned something new. Here we go. Awesome. All right. All right, everybody. I want you to move your head like this. All right, here we go. I'm the king of the jungle. I'm a righteous gent. My big old hair is the main event. I'm a whole lot of fun. I ain't no more. You'll know what I mean when you hear me roar. <laughs> Love it. So each each dinky character has a theme song uh, and a, a video that we've filmed for it as well. You'll see that dance coming up here that Ryan oh, yeah. was talking about. I have a funny story about the dance too when we get to that. I'm waiting for it. Not always right. I like to kick back. Sitting in the shade. I'm a real cool cat. But when I hear the music, I gotta hit the floor. Come on, everybody. Here it comes. Here comes the dance. Time to dance and roll. It's time to dance and so I had a, I had a user tell me uh, that we, uh, we we lost the audio there in the clip. So uh, let, me, uh, let me go back to it. I know exactly what happened. We'll finish up on the clip here in one second. But you know, Ryan, as as I'm setting that up, tell me. Yeah. You you wrote this music, so your background you said was business, but now you're telling me your background is music. I am Double so major. confused. Yeah. So again, the the entrepreneurial side of me, you know, growing up in a family that was bootstrappers, was <laughs> um, I played in bands as as a young person, and, and really fell into love, you know, sing, singer songwriter stuff, and have been blessed to, uh, you know, play music with some close friends and, and turn it into, you know, a, a revenue stream. And so I, I play, I, I release music as Ryan Axtell. I release music as a band, Common Courier, and a new kind of Americana band called Bad Margarita. Uh, <laughs> and then also writing, you know, writing kids songs. So we actually are prepping these songs to be released as an album. You can listen to them on, you know, TikTok, Instagram. People can make videos yeah. with the lyrics and they'll be on Spotify and all that. But um, yeah, music's been a big part of my life for a long time. And But comes from that same place. You know, how do I take something that right. I really enjoy doing and, and how do I create something of value that other people may enjoy? Yeah, yeah. So let me, let's, uh, let's give the... Uh, viewers here, the little music there. All right. But when I hear the music, 
gotta hit the floor. Come on, everybody. It's time to dance and roll. <laughs> we lost the music on our side, Al. I'm not sure if it's because when you come off the screen, it needs it or not. I mean, there it is, guys. Yeah, the the, the <laughs> folks at home were hearing that. Uh, Perfect. Just, okay. Great stuff. Great stuff. Well, and, and the fun, you know, the fun of it is that for each character, there's a there's a theme song. There's a thing we call an axe tracks uh, that has the song in it, and it also has a, a a pre-recorded audio routine you can play from you know Dropbox or your phone, and basically it would have a a couple minutes of you know the character's voice. You do a little bit of dialogue, and the character sings a song at the end. But again, it's a, it's a great way for let's say a teacher to bring on and do something a little different on our Zoom call for five minutes, you know, mm. or um, an entertainer to add. And then we also have, you know, we make a thing called an easy talk and a dinky talk, and it actually allows the <laughs> AI capabilities of our really expensive yeah. animatronics. We've been able to include the AI functionality in a very simple system called the easy talk that'll bring most of our puppets to life. And you wow. can actually greatly use, reduce price. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun, but yeah. Each if you go and look up the Dinkies on YouTube, each each character has a theme song, and then Steve and I film it on on blue screen and green screen. Yeah. Which fun fact, a lot of the characters we make are blue or green. <laughs> so <laughs> we bounce. We, we have to change back backgrounds quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. I had a couple of comments too. You know, we must have a glitch today on the platform. Go to YouTube, mm -hmm. watch these videos. Just you know, go ahead and search Dinkies, Lions, Axtell. Uh, the yeah. song's going to pop up. Um, we did everything right, but somehow we had a technical glitch, so I apologize for that. Yeah, check out check out the Dinky Frog also. This so, is Gina. the latest song that we did, and Ryan just blew it. It's so good. It's just blew it out of the water. So fun. Last thing, I'll say, last thing I'll say about the music is... For the frog, we wanted kind of a you know bluegrassy type yeah. song, yeah. and uh -huh. Steve's like, I really want like a washboard sound in that. Well, I don't have a That's washboard, yeah. but we found a dryer tube, <laughs> and I used a guitar pick on it. And so, if you go and listen to the song, it's the Dinky Frog. This life's for me. But if you listen yeah. to it, it's a great li song. listen in the little breakdown in the middle of the song. You're going to hear a dryer tube. <laughs> so, use what's around you. That's right. <laughs> well, guys, you know, not everybody has the the the. the multiple level of talents that you two have. But I think the lesson for business in this today, first of all, is that you just don't stop creating. You just don't stop imagining. Mm -hmm. You just don't stop talking to your audience. You just use every opportunity to put something new out there for folks to see. Yeah. And you keep talking to the people that are your best customers. Like you say, it is one of those things that, you know, you are, you've got customers, replacing customers, acquiring new customers is difficult. The average yeah. user, I said, I think you said 15 uh, articles of, of what you sell from your website. So it's incredible. It's amazing, it is an man. absolute honor and pleasure having you guys here today. Um, yeah, that's great. Uh, uh, Brett says, never stop dreaming. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. exactly right, Brett. I mean, we're going to we're gonna kind of leave the comments at that. Absolutely true. Yeah. yeah. Gentlemen. Well, Al, the, last, the last thing I, I would say is, you know, for anyone to encourage anyone when it comes to promotion too is just be be generous with your information. You know, give a lot of stuff away. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think sometimes when you're trying to maybe monetize something, you you really try to keep everything you know behind a paywall or a gate. And there's a time and a place for that. But right. I've just been inspired by people that give stuff away freely and re resource your community. And then if they if they want to dive deeper, maybe there's well, revenue streams for it that. Builds but, trust and and yeah. it helps them to want to be on the team yeah but yeah. be generous with what you know and i think for us it's like man let's show people behind the curtain you know and if yeah. if that inspires them to go make great puppets and yeah. they stop buying from us like more power yeah. to them you know oh, right. we don't we don't mind showing behind the scenes because we think our people are going to really enjoy yeah. the blood sweat and tears that goes into making the products that we make from a, a pretty talented team we have here we're, we're grateful well, to work with them remember this started with a guy like jim henson say kids you're good make your own stuff and yeah. What better inspiration can you find than that? So that's right. That's outstanding. Well, guys, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. You know, normally I sign off by by having my little outro video going on. Uh, 
you know, uh, and, and letting people see. But I thought today uh, I would play a classic piece of video um, by, oh. two, by two strapping uh, young men. Um, uh, you used to call it, I don't think you do these anymore. It's called Axtell Magic Moments. Yeah. Uh, so yes. let's, let's hit the Wayback Machine. All uh, right. <laughs> sit back and watch it with me, uh, and we'll say our goodbye at this One point. of my favorite ones. Oh, please. And uh, <laughs> I told you he's a good salesman, folks, didn't I? <laughs> we'll go ahead and end on this, but this is a classic piece of video of me being interviewed by Mr. Steve Axtell. Ryan, Steve, thank you so much for being here today. You are Thanks, here. man. Thank oh, you. enjoyed thank it. You, discover that that's a lifelong partner right but it is a discovery of a character and the Absolutely. birthing of a character is it's pretty fascinating and not and that i'm kissing up to the host but i gotta say with most of your characters when i pick them up something comes out oh uh, that's great before i picked yeah. up your orangutan and right away a british accent came out and we, you know we're that's doing right all that. yeah so it's fun yeah it's uh thank you and it's interesting because uh we do put a tremendous amount of effort into the design before it gets to you yeah. and then uh, it's it's perhaps maybe more magical when yeah. they do come to life. Yeah, I would agree. I, I would agree. Yeah, and you guys work pretty hard at it. So. Uh, Any one of them interesting? Uh, no, interesting? actually none of these okay. at all. No, let me try this one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be going with this one then. All right, maybe, good. Maybe, uh, uh, now this is a very ready? cool, we, we talked about this a bit before. He is, he is wicked cool. So, <laughs> um, so, you know, he's, almost, he's like a lot of dogs people have. It's almost ugly, he's almost cute. <laughs> Hi, how are you? It's good to see you. Where oh. are we? We're at the ventriloquist convention. I feel like I'm in a whole other world. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, you, how you feeling today? I'm feeling all right. I got a sore throat. Let me take a look at it. Oh, yeah. Look at you. do have a sore throat there. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, well, can you tell me a bit about yourself? Oh, well, sure. Um, where do you live? I live in the city dump. The city dump? Yeah, that's kind of disgusting. Uh, it's a living. Yeah, I guess it is, yeah. And your color is purple. That's how I'm feeling today. Oh, you've, you changed colors. No, it's just how I'm feeling. I see, good. And this is uh, Steve Axel. He's a genius. Yes, he is a genius. <laughs> how do you know? 